got another 1966 resto mod here. We're going to meet the owner and we're going to find out what he's done to this car and the history behind it. So let's take a look at this thing. I'm Patricio and this is my 1966 Ford Mustang GT. I was gifted this car by my father uh, for my 15th birthday as a, um, as a project. All right. So the idea was that we were going to work on it together, restore it. And it all started in January 1993. Oh, by the way, and this this was back in, in Bolivia, in La Paz. So the, the, the amount of Mustangs available out there were not that many. We found crazy cars. I even ran into a 66 with a four door conversion. One day we were coming down the road and we see this one Mustang sitting in the side of the road. So we decide to stop. We come to the owner and we're like, hey, you're interested in selling it. And he tells us that he had just sold the car. So he had just sold the car. He was waiting for the new owner. So we ask him, do you mind if we, you know, if we hang out and, and wait for the new owner to come? Like he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. So he had sold the car for $600. We waited for the new owner to come and, uh, uh, and show up. And we're like, I'll buy for you, uh, from you for 800. And he's like, no, I just bought it. I want to take it home, my car. I'm like, a thousand. And he kind of thought about it for a second, looked at his buddy, he's like, deal. And he just exchanged, exchanged keys with me and made 400 bucks for showing up. But I ended up buying the car for a thousand bucks. What was the condition of the car? Oh, the car needed a lot of work. I mean, it was pretty beat. It was originally like a light blue color. It had the pony interior. It was an original GT car. Unfortunately, it was a little beat up, so it needed restoration. And uh, my dad intelligently said, okay, we're gonna restore it. And the day we bought it, disassembled it to the last bolt so I couldn't get to drive it when I was, at, I was 15. And he kind of took the time to, to work on the car with me and it took a, a period of two years. So I really finished the car when I was 17 and I used it uh, for my last year in high school. So it was, it was, it was my high school car for my senior year uh, down in Bolivia. And, um, and then I ended up coming to college to the US, car stayed over there. And one day back in 2007, I decided, you know what, I want to bring the car back uh, with me to Miami. So we loaded it up on a container, bought it over here, and I've had it in Miami since 2007. Your car was red. Correct. The car was red. I, the original restoration we did on the car was all original, all right? So the car was painted red. Everything was built um, specifically as it was back in 66, all original parts, full GT car, GT headlights, emblems, everything. So the car was a, was a true GT um, 66. But I always had in the, like in the back of my mind the idea of building a little bit of a resto mod. Um, and then, what year was it? 2020, right? As we were getting into COVID time, I saw that I had some rust, you know, Miami weather is tough on the cars. So I had a little bit of rust on the doors. I had a little bit of rust on the quarter panels. My idea originally was to, you know, fix the doors, fix the quarter panels and be done with it, you know? But one thing led to another and the snowball effect started happening and <laughs> what started to be a, a, as, a, as a door repair ended up being a full nut and bolt restoration once again um the idea was that the whole process was going to take us about a year ended up taking them three so nothing is uh, as expected but um but i think i went a little bit overboard from the original idea of just fixing a couple of things and i Everything in the car is new now. Absolutely nothing that came out of the car in 2020 went back in the car. The car has brand new uh, right tech suspension, coilovers with a four link in the rear. It has a four wheel disc brake conversion from Wilwood. It has a 347 stroker engine. Uh, it has a new TKX uh, five speed manual transmission, all TMI interior. Uh, so I just went all out with, with a with the repairs. It's a 347 stroker, so it's a newer body 302 stroked out to a 347. Everything in the engine is, uh, is Eagle components and um, roller cams and everything. So we ended up going with, uh, with a carb. Originally, I wanted to do uh, fuel injection, but a lot of the guys that ha had been putting the fuel injection in their cars were having a bunch of issues. And I figured, you know what? It's been three years. I just want to get the car on the road. I just want to get it going. So I decided to go carb. It's an easy fix. Just put it on, turn it on, and the car the car runs. Have you dynoed this car? No, not yet. The engine is supposed to be rated at 450. So maybe, you know, we should be looking at anywhere close to 400 at the wheels. But is it a cruiser or is it a... Oh, 
No, no, no. You step on it a I little bit. I step on it. I step on it. Yeah. The purpose of this build was to be able to car that I can have fun with. You know, it was something that I could, you know, get on the on, on, a, on a red light to the next one and kind of feel the vibe. And the, the funny thing is that it, when you're in one of these cars, you, you you come to a to a red light and somebody will come come next to you and be like revving the engines and kind of kind of provoking you to to do a little run. Everybody's always asking me about components, what kind of tires and all that. Tell me a little bit of what your ride is on your rims and tires. All right, so um, I decided to go on a staggered um, uh, look on the car. On the rears, I have 275, 35, 18 Falcon tires. And on the front, I got 245s, 4018s. How did you get that in there? I have a three inch flare, both on the front and the rear. It, it's still so subtle that keeps the car um, looking original but it has that much wider of a stance that you can have, uh, you know, well, for one, you can fit the 275s in the rear because there was no other way that I could have fit right. those in this car without tubbing it. And it's not tubbed. Rims, as you know, are the most important part of a car. I think it makes it or breaks it. It took a while for me to make the decision on what to buy. And I ended up going with these. They're uh, Adohan wheels. Uh, I ordered them in the bronze color because they did not have the gunmetal gray that I wanted. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, my idea was, okay, I receive it and I'll paint them. W once I got the rims and I put them together and I put them in the car, the bronze uh, kind of felt good. Show me the front. You got LEDs on this thing? Yes. Um, I decided to go with LEDs um, on the front with an integrated uh, turn single. I was just trying to avoid to have the extra lights and everything on the front apron. I was trying to keep right. it as simple as possible. The hood, we changed the, the central locking system for two push pins. So we got two push pins that easily will will pop up the hood like that and and keep it simple and this is the baby huh and that's a baby right there 347 stroker full ac i have a manual uh rack and pinion i uh, at first i did put a power steering unit in it but uh but it was giving me a little bit of issues so i decided to to just go manual and, and change it for the uh for the same same unit but directly manual um rack and pinion it's a little bit stiff for for parking but uh it, at, at speed driving it, it makes it a little bit better and safer you got msd yes i got msd ignition i got uh all the all the cables in, in in red just to match the calipers in the car as well everything else the whole engine bay was painted blue same color of the car and uh i have a full ac system for vintage air so this is the uh, fan for the ac on the outside and then we have the fan on the inside that just pulls the pulls air uh, to cool the car. And the radiator is kind of small and you got no problems? It is a bigger radiator than original. It is aluminum and we just painted it black. Mm -hmm. um, car runs a little bit on the hot side. Mm -hmm. So eventually one of the upgrades I want to do is is, is a, a better cooling system. Uh, it's running really, really tight on, on, on the hot side of the engine. And your serpentine belt system? Yes, full serpentine. Um, we decided to go with uh, with that system right there. And like I said, it had the um, the power steering unit as well. We have all Meyer Racing fenders. Uh, the fender is 100% uh, fiberglass with a three inch flare. As you can see, that's that's about a three inch uh, wider on the on the front. Mm -hmm. uh, we blacked out everything. So we have the blackout uh, trim on the windows. I put black uh, mirrors, black door handles, and uh, and in the rear, as you can see as well, we have another three inch flare. The, this is just an add on. So the part comes from here around the top and we, we just kind of put it together on top of the metal and, and bondo it together. Um, on the rear, we have a paint to match bumper. So it's the original bumper, um, but we had it painted and we did the black uh, lenses as well, as well as the cap for the um, for the for the gas tank. What exhaust are you running on this? Uh, it has a Magnaflow exhaust, but the uh, the issue that we ran into is since we put um, the four link in the rear, we could not get the exhaust to come over the um, over the uh, the axle into the back. All right, so on the inside, we went with a full um, TMI interior, as you can see. These are the uh, the luxury or the premium uh, version. The same as the as the deluxe pony interior mm -hmm. um and you have this the mix of the suede and the leather on it i did put the the dash as well with the suede in the center um we had installed a full sony um radio system with six speakers in it the radio system is is uh compatible with uh, carplay 
So I have all the modern amenities of the uh, of, a, of a modern car on the on the classic. It has a rear view um, a rear view camera, so it has a backup camera, and, and as you can see, a full AC system from Vintage Air. So the dash in the car is old Dakota Digital. The speedometer is um, is is run through GPS. It is a five speed um, Tremec. It's a new TKX transmission from Tremec, which is. Uh, capable of up to 650 foot-pounds of torque. How does this thing make you feel when you're driving this thing knowing that this was your first car and now where it's become? No, 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 that words cannot describe what, uh, what the car makes me feel. People ask me if I would ever sell it and uh, the, the answer is a very, very simple no. Um, I think this, this car is gonna get you know, passed over to, to my kids. As a matter of fact, uh, just last week I had my 13 year old learn stick shift driving in the car so so we're practicing and 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 uh the the first thing he told me after he drove it is like you know dad i think this could be a very good first car for me as well so i think i got another two years before he gets his license for me to enjoy it and then i guess it's gonna have to be handed over to the new generation